Hello, I'm Dennis Michael Lynch, and tonight is part two of a special program about what inspired our new show called Unfiltered. But before we begin, I want you to go to your DVR right now and set it to record Dennis Michael Lynch Unfiltered every night at 9 p.m. Eastern, because you never want to miss a show. And here's why. Aside from the fact that yours truly is the only conservative hosting a news program at this hour, what makes Unfiltered different is that we rely on you, our audience, to dictate the stories I cover each night. I'll explain more about that later in the show. Now, last night we played videos sent in by our audience. These are folks like you who follow me on Facebook or who watch television and are completely fed up with the mainstream media's refusal to report the facts. Tonight, I will play more of your videos, plus I will continue with showing you the stories and events that inspired me to create Unfiltered and how I will do whatever it takes to fight for America and her future. That said, in part one, I focused exclusively on immigration. Tonight, I expand into other key areas. So get ready. It's going to be a powerful one hour, and it's all unfiltered. The members of our military, both past and present, are the heart and soul of this country. And yet the government treats illegal aliens better than our veterans. Currently, thousands of veterans are living on the streets. Thousands are unemployed. Each day, 22 veterans commit suicide. The VA, they continue to treat veterans like cattle. As the son of a 1-9 U.S. Marine who served in Vietnam, I find it unacceptable. And I will use my new position here to hold people accountable. I will be on the VA like white on rice. I find it despicable that the Obama administration allows these things to happen to our veterans. And the media's willingness to just toss our veterans under the bus to protect the liberal agenda they push is downright criminal. To get a visual for what I'm talking about, let's look back at the government shutdown from two years ago. Today, I watched Thousands of illegal immigrants just walk right through the mall. Nobody stopping them, no gate. Uh, actually, I'm wrong. There was one gate with a sign that said, don't come in. But when you went to the memorial, the gates are still up. This is the first time in history that this president or any president put barricades up on this or any other monument. This is only politics. Sir, may I politely ask you a question? I'm sorry, are you allowing them in here today? The veterans? I'm not in a position to comment on any of this right now. I'm sorry. I want to join my colleague uh, uh, who meant, uh, thank the president for enabling us to gather here and also thank the president that the veterans were able to gather at World War II Memorial. What is she talking about? Uh, she's just delivering a bunch of baloney just like the president is. Obama for open the park. Thank you, Obama for open the park. Nancy, did you visit the what? Did you visit the vet memorial today? Not yet. Are you going? I go all the time. But are you going today? Nancy, go today. Make sure they can get in, okay? I don't go to grandstand. You don't? So what's today? Is today a grandstand, Nancy? And what is disgusting is that people like my husband who fought in World War II cannot come to see their own monument. You'll get in today. You'll get in today, sir. One way or another, you're getting in today. Even if you got to go on my back. Unwilling to just sit back and watch World War II heroes be mistreated, veterans, truckers, and everyday Americans from all over the country gather together at the memorials to voice frustration. Obama has the audacity to treat them that, you know, like, like the memorial's not theirs. Who does it belong to if not the veterans? Unless there's violence or racism, the rallies won't be covered. The mainstream press would rather find somebody who's vile and cover that as an expression of 
This is what's representative of the entire rally. The only reason you saw a mainstream press camera there was because they were looking to pan the crowd for the one guy who was acting like an idiot. It isn't right for our veterans to have to storm barricades at home. And not this president or any president is going to stop them from seeing these memorials. Sure, Tea Party people might jump up and cheer that. Some people might jump up and cheer that. But the president believes, the Democrats believe, and the polling indicates they are right, that in the wide, broad swath of America, people look at that and just shake their heads. And uh, as disabled veterans, he had a traumatic brain injury, missed his foot, a devil dog right there, fought in the Iraq War, and I'm proud of him. And uh, we're out here for these guys, and especially these guys right here. This is who we're here for. They should be resting in peace right now, not, not rolling around. All you have to do is look around and you see that this country is slowly sinking. And until someone or something comes along to ignite that spark again and the, and the news media fans that flame and helps it to grow, we are going to continue to slowly dissolve. This isn't their memorial. They have no right to tell us what we can do here. America is coming back! Yes! Yes! This is a protest about nothing. It amazes me that they've, they've settled on this thing about the monuments. Like, this is one of the genuinely unimportant functions of the federal government. It's just disrespectful. We're all putting our life on the line to, to defend what, what everybody lives for. Last week, I came down here. I saw barricades, and I saw American citizens and veterans closed out. And when I saw that, I said, wow, our nation has really, really lost its way. But let me tell you something, and you have my gentleman's promise. I never served, but I'm trying to serve now in my own little way. Tomorrow night, I'm going to be on Fox on Megyn Kelly telling, yeah! telling millions of people that you guys stood out here in the rain to bring back America. Yeah! But millions of people need to know your name and where you served. And if you have a family member who served, they need to know their name. Because D.C. has obviously forgotten. Yes, On three, I want your name and where you served. And you throw in your rank there if you like it too. You ready? One, two, three. It was billed as an apolitical celebration of America's veterans and indignation, the fact that the memorials were closed with the shutdown, but then it just became a big Tea Party rally. This was a veterans event, and what they tried to do was diminish it by making it a partisan event, and it wasn't. Don, Don, you have people that are on record that work for the park services that were told by their bosses to make this shutdown as painful as possible. Oh, when now you you're going on to something else. Guards. The, the, the road is clear. They could have driven all the way up right to the World War II Memorial. They made them stop here, and they're going to have to wheel them down. That is not how we treat our World War II vets. How many hours have they been on that bus? They've been on the bus since 9.30 a.m. It's now 11 o'clock. And these, these, these men are so old, they didn't realize that there was anything going wrong. They thought this was the norm and it breaks your heart. And where are you from? I'm from, uh, excuse me, from Washington. And where'd, where'd you serve? The, uh, help me, son. Iwo Jima, Iwo Jima, Okinawa. 
It's been amazing to watch the coverage of this event, which unquestionably had some Tea Party members there, some politicians there, but had a lot of vets there and regular Americans who were upset about the barricades being put in front of these memorials. But if you, you might not even know that if you watch channels other than Fox, because they want you to believe it's all about the so-called fringe. What I saw this weekend was a collection of thousands upon thousands of veterans that if their president was to fall down on the ground, whether they agree with his policies or disagree, they would protect his life. Hundreds of veterans decided it was time to sound a louder message. And so they took the barricades and peacefully placed them in front of the White House. The liberal media took advantage of the visuals by making the veterans appear to be radical racists. But I was there. I caught it all on camera. And the truth is this. Veterans, women, and children were hit with clubs and treated like criminals. When we come back, a first-hand look down the barrel of the government's machine guns. Are you really going to shoot these people if they move forward, yes or no? If you know, you shoot. If you shoot me, you shoot. I got no gun. 